good morning everyone uh, let us start uh, this chapter 3 yeah. this in this video clip we'll look at the first part of chapter 3 yeah. now chapter 3 is working with financial statements in chapter 2 we have looked at yeah, financial statements and here in chapter 3 we will look at how we can use the financial statements yeah, to uh, do some interpretation and do some analysis all right so let's uh, continue to the next slide yeah this is the next slide let me just get the pointer all right yeah so uh, this uh, uh, topic yeah, uh, or this chapter is made up of five key yeah, topics key concepts as indicated here there are five key concepts the first part is to do with uh, financial statements yeah okay uh, um, the statement of cash flows as you can see here yeah it is a preparation uh, of the statement of cash flows yeah all right statement of cash flows then uh, the second part is to look at standardizing yeah, the financial statements. Okay, so what is meant by standardizing? We'll look at that uh, in the second key concept. And the third key concept is looking at the ratios, yeah, common ratios, how to compute and how to interpret. Yeah? These are the two things that we'll be looking at in terms of financial ratios. Yeah? And uh, the fourth key uh, concept will be to uh, look at the DuPont identity, yeah? or widely known as the DuPont framework or DuPont analysis. Okay, so we look at what that means. Yeah? It basically is a framework that brings together some of the common ratios. Okay, and uh, the final, yeah? last uh, key concept, fifth and final key concept is to explain some of the weaknesses or shortcomings. Yeah in uh, doing this financial statement analysis or ratio analysis so we look at some problems yeah or pit pitfalls okay so the chapter outline i've already explained is made up of five key concepts so let's look at the first part yeah first part the first key concept is about uh, deriving the uh, statement of cash flows okay yeah so before we do that we need to understand what we mean by the sources and users of cash yeah, because we want to derive the statement of cash flows so this cash flow is based on cash so we want to see what we mean by sources and users of cash yeah, which is the uh, underlying basis of cash flow yeah all right when we say sources it is simply uh, it simply means yeah these uh, sources are cash inflow which occurs when uh, we here means business yeah the business sells something yeah all right, so uh, a, a use on the other hand, the opposite of source, yeah? sources of cash will be users of cash. Users of cash are cash outflow. Yeah? When the cash flows out from the business, this occurs when we, or we as the business, yeah, buy something. All right, uh, when we sell, there is a cash inflow. We sell some item, okay, we get cash, therefore there is a cash inflow. When we buy something, we pay cash yeah, for the item. Therefore, there is a cash outflow. That is how you, you interpret this, yeah, the sources and users of cash. Now, how do we relate this to the items in the balance sheet? Yeah? How do you know when there is a change in the balance sheet item, whether it's a cash inflow or a cash outflow? Okay, we use this principle again, yeah, the, the selling of something and the buying of something. Yeah? Therefore, if you look at an asset account, yeah, any asset item okay, in the balance sheet, if there is a decrease in that item, then it is a cash inflow. Okay, For example, accounts receivable, inventory and fixed assets. These are three types of asset items yeah, or asset accounts. So when these accounts uh, have a decrease, yeah, there is a reduction in the balance item or in the item value okay one year to the next then we consider that as a source of cash yeah? because you sell these items okay inventory receivables or you convert yeah, these two items to cash and you sell yeah, these fixed assets in order to get cash therefore these are all sources of cash when there is a reduction in the asset account 
Okay, on the other hand, the liability and equity account, any item in the liability or equity account, if there is an increase in that item, then it is a source of cash. For example, payables, yeah, accounts payable, or other current liabilities and common stock. All these, yeah, these are three examples here. All these, if there is an increase in the item, then this will be a source of cash. Yeah? Increase means here of payables, you delay your payment to your suppliers, therefore you conserve cash. Yeah? When you conserve cash, there is a cash inflow. Okay, a reduction of a cash outflow yeah, is also a cash inflow. Alright, likewise current liabilities, other current liabilities are common stock. Yeah? Common stock means you issue new stock or new shares to your investors or shareholders. You receive cash from them. Yeah? Therefore, this is a source of cash. It will give you a cash inflow, therefore it's a source of cash. The opposite is true. If these items uh, change yeah, in a, a different or opposite direction, for example, if it's an asset account, if there's an increase in the asset account item, okay, cash and other, yeah, including receivables, inventory, or fixed assets, yeah. So if there is an increase in the asset account item, then this would be a use of cash, a cash outflow, yeah. How do you increase these accounts? You increase by converting cash into these accounts. Okay, that, that, that means you use yeah, the cash to purchase uh, these assets or you, you uh, have cash tied up as these assets. Okay, so therefore you use cash. There is a cash outflow. Yeah? Alright, when there is a decrease in liability or equity item, if it's a liability or equity account, if the item decreases, for example, notes payable and long-term debt. Okay, If there is a decrease in this item, it means that it is a use of cash. There is a cash outflow. Yeah? How does this uh, decrease? Notes payable, you pay. Yeah? You repay. You use cash to repay your loan yeah? or your long-term debt. Therefore, it is a use of cash. Okay, So that is uh, how uh, this should be interpreted. Yeah? Alright. So if you look at uh, it's not going to the next slide, yeah? Alright. Okay, so here we have uh, the uses and sources of cash summarized in a 2x2 two two matrix table, yeah? You have assets here on the left-hand side, liabilities and equity on the right-hand side, yeah? So if there is an increase in the asset item, so it is a use of cash, and these are examples given, yeah? And if there is an increase in the liability or equity account, then it is a source of cash. Okay, if there is a decrease in an asset account, okay, then it is a source of cash. Whereas if there is a decrease in the liabilities or equity account, it is a use of cash. Yeah. So this two by two matrix helps you uh, remember yeah, and also understand. Yeah. Note that this two by two matrix, it's like a cross. Yeah. If it's a use here, it must be a use here. Yeah? An increase in asset is a use, therefore a decrease in liability is also a use. Likewise, an increase in liabilities and equity is a source of cash. Likewise, a decrease in asset yeah, is also a source of cash. Okay, so these are examples. Yeah? Some of the examples we have seen, cash used up to buy fixed assets or cash tied up as current assets. This will be use of cash yeah when there is an increase in the asset item it is a use or a cash outflow okay and if uh, you look at this example here cash got from new borrowing yeah? if you borrow more or if you issue new debt securities or new shares or uh, this will be sources of cash yeah and this third item is uh, may not be very obvious to students okay uh, cash safe from delaying payment to suppliers. You delay your payment to your suppliers, therefore you conserve cash. Yeah? And therefore this is a cash inflow. Okay, You conserve cash, you keep the cash for longer, therefore it is a source of cash. Is that okay? Alright, so then if you look at the asset item, okay, uh, if there is a decrease in the asset item, so it will be a source of cash. Yeah? This is cash got from selling off fixed assets and cash got from reducing current assets yeah so if you sell off fixed assets you get cash likewise you uh, reduce yeah the cash tied up as uh, current assets you also 
uh, release cash. Yeah, you you convert these items to cash. Therefore, you get cash inflow. It is a source of cash. Now, if uh, the cash is used to repay borrowing, okay, if it's a liability or equity item, yeah, you reduce that. Cash is used to repay the borrowing, or cash is used to repurchase shares. Yeah, this is called share buyback. Okay, this will be a cash use, and it is a cash outflow. Yeah. And this, the third item here may not be very obvious, just like here, the opposite of this item here. Okay, cash loss from paying your supplier earlier. Yeah? If you pay your suppliers earlier, that means you have less payables. And therefore, you don't conserve cash. Yeah? You use your cash earlier. Okay, you pay earlier, therefore, it is a use of cash or a cash outflow. It is a use of cash. Is that okay? So this is a summary. Yeah. And it's quite easy to remember as long as this is made up of four quadrants here. Okay, four quadrants. As long as you understand one, the others you can uh, work out. Yeah? For example, if it is a use, then the opposite here must be a use. If this is a source, the opposite here must be a source. Yeah? It is like an X, if you can imagine. Yeah? X, okay, from here to here. Yeah? It's like an X. Source here, source here, use here, use here. Yeah? But you must at least decipher yeah, or interpret or get one quadrant right. Yeah? If you get the first quadrant right, then the all, all the other quadrants will be correct. But if you get this wrong, okay, one of these quadrants is wrong, then all the others will be wrong. Yeah? So you have to be careful in interpretation. Yeah? Alright, so uh, let's move on. Okay, yeah? another thing that you need to remember is that you have use of cash, cash as a use and cash as an asset. So you have to be careful about interpreting this. Yeah? For example, increase of a cash as an asset. Yeah? Remember, cash is also an asset. Yeah? It is a current asset. It appears in the asset item. So if there is an increase in cash, it is actually a use of cash. Yeah? So that may be a bit uh, mind-boggling. Yeah? It might be confusing. But you must remember, yeah? Here we see cash as two separate things. Yeah? One as a cash flow, as a source or use. Okay, whether it's a cash inflow or an outflow, but also cash as an asset. Okay, so these two are different things. Yeah. So an increase in cash as an asset is actually a use of cash or a cash outflow. The opposite is true. If there is a decrease of cash as an asset, it is a source of cash. Okay. When cash as an asset becomes lower, you actually release cash yeah, that the company can use or the business can use for other purposes, for example, investment or repayment of loan and so on. Okay, likewise, when you increase cash as an asset, cash is tied up as an asset. Yeah? Okay, and therefore, it is a reduction in cash and therefore, it is a use of cash. So, this is important to understand. Is that okay? Alright, let's move on to the next slide yeah now we come to the statement of cash flows yeah what is this statement of cash flows once we have understood what a cash flow means then we can prepare a statement of cash flows now a statement of cash flows summarizes the sources and users of funds yeah? or cash yeah? sources and use of users of cash we have seen the sources and users of cash in the previous slide yeah now we'll go about looking at how we can summarize the sources and users of cash in this particular format, yeah, statement of cash flows. Now, this statement of cash flows uh, summarizes yeah, the sources and uses of cash into three categories. Yeah? That means cash generated from three activities. The first one is operating activity, the second one is investment activity, and the third one is financing activity. And note that these three activities are very much in line with the three financial manager decisions that we have seen in Chapter 1. Okay, in chapter 1, the major activity yeah, of a financial manager we have seen is to make long-term investment decisions or capital budgeting decisions. Yeah? So, this comes under investment activity. Okay, and then the second most important yeah, uh, financial uh, management decision will be capital structure decision. Yeah? This, is, uh, this has to do with uh, long-term financing yeah, decisions. So this comes under financing activity, okay. And the third one is day-to-day, -day, yeah, daily uh, uh, transactions, yeah, 
and this comes under operating activity okay also known as the working capital decisions yeah working capital management decisions so this comes under operating activity.